What started sort of the rift that, that ultimately had you leave the group? Uh, I mean, ultimately, it was management. Uh, he, I mean, he he did get kind of, kind of loud and uh, I don't know the right word to, to say it right now, but um, it's not a way you would want somebody treating your 18 year old daughter uh, fresh out of the hospital from stomach flu and dehydration. And um, it just started getting more where I guess I was I wasn't saying anything like I said I was just taking it and. I'm on, like you said, I'm on the outside and I'm around everybody, their whole family. And um, Michelle has her family who's like all, you know, God fearing in a church and they stick together. And I'm kind of like the, you know, the one out left or whatever. And I've been taking care of myself and holding my family down. So I kind of felt like I was a little bit like, okay, you need to be happy to be here. So just take it. And I did, you know, until I was tired of taking it. And, not from management and not like I said from someone who you don't want talking to your daughter that way or dealing with your daughter because my father had issues. In 2000, Beyonce actually spoke about you leaving the group, uh, I guess on MTV. Oh, okay. So this was on, I guess, TRL and Beyonce was speaking, you know, about, about the situation. So she says, we have to say that Pharaoh was not kicked out of Destiny's Child. She actually did not show up for three major promotional events. One which was MTV All Access, she walked out on that, and the Cube Summer Jam, another one in Seattle. You'll see all that on the All Access show. We also had a five day promotional tour in Australia, which was our first visit there, very important, she didn't come. We all agreed that Farah and Destiny's Child should part ways. We wish her the best in the future. But it wasn't a management decision, it was a group decision. We all feel that no personal problems that can be resolved or worth disappointing your fans. Yeah, well, that's not true. I've never missed a show, ever, or I would have got kicked out the group. <laughs> you know how much I was getting paid to do a show, and that's the best part of my day? I'm not missing any shows. But when I leave the group, they weren't honest with people and said that I left. They were trying to give themselves more time to clear the air or whatever, but I've never missed a show, ever. And like I said, if I would have missed the group, then they would have kicked me out. So you can't say I'm missing shows if I'm no longer a part of the group anymore. That's a lie. <laughs> Bold face one. Have you heard this before? Yeah, I've heard that before. Okay. So why, why, do, you, why do you think that Beyonce said this when, when you're saying it's not true? Because they didn't want people to know that. They didn't want to tell people what was going on. And they just lost two other members six months ago. But everybody's leaving for the same reason, and we don't even know each other. It's always, you know, something. So I think they were giving themselves enough time to, to put it together a plan of what they were going to say or whatever, because, like I said, I've never missed a show. These shows that she's talking about, are you saying that you were no longer part of the group when these shows actually happened? Yes. The only I did walk out on Seattle, and that's when I quit the group. What you see is me leaving the group. <laughs> And so there Okay, so you you actually walked out. That's how you quit. You actually walked out in the middle of a show? No, 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 no. I walked out of my hotel room. We weren't filming. It wasn't nothing going on. Like we were in Seattle and this was like the next day that I came back from, like I said, being very, very, very sick and nobody, anyone was showing concern at all except for Michelle. And like I said, I, my doctor told me I wasn't supposed to be doing any strenuous dancing or anything for at least two weeks. And I was like, now nah, give me a shot because I have a show to do tomorrow. I got on the airplane and did my job. I never complained or anything like, and I was just getting kicked and punched around. I was already dehydrated and tired. And when I went into the room for us to have a group conversation, it was like everybody just started ganging up on me. Everybody had something to say. I'm like, okay, I'm not about to do this. And then, so I walked out of the room. I'm like, I'm not about to let oh, you guys just jump on me and gang up on me. This is ridiculous. You were with the group for what, like six months? Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't even a huge amount of time. No, no, it wasn't, uh, no, it wasn't that long. It was long enough to, you know, get my name out there and three passports and, <laughs> and um, experience <clears throat> what I'm about to do now and be ready for it this time, go around and, know what I want and hopefully have the best team around me because that's what I feel I've been missing. Okay. 
After you decided to leave, then you did you and Michelle have a conversation about this? Uh, actually, Michelle called me from the airport, um, and at the time, I lived in 45 minutes away from the airport. She called me from the airport. Now, mind you, after I left the group, after I left Seattle, no one called me for three days. Not management, anyone. No one called me to try to, you know, figure out what's going on or anything. Michelle called me three days later from the airport talking about, hey, are you coming to Australia? Huh? <laughs> even if I wanted to go to Australia, there's no way I would have even made it. So that was just that was just another thing of them trying to act like they wanted me to come so they could say that I'm missing shows. I'm not a part of the group anyway, so I'm not going to Australia. Nobody's even called me to have a group meeting and nothing. It's been three days. And that's why I said I have a problem with management because management should have made that happen. Wow, so you're saying that Michelle didn't even know that you were no longer in the group? No. Uh-huh. So when you told her that, no, I'm no longer in the group, how did she react? She was like, just come, please, just come. She's like, we only have to finish this album and then, you know, we can do our own thing, just please. But, like, were you and Michelle pretty close? Yeah, we were roommates. We were the closest. Like, Kelly and I originally were the closest. And then B and I got close, and then Michelle and I ended up getting real close, obviously because we were the new girls, and we shared rooms, so. We, we shared hotel rooms, and we had an apartment together in Houston, so. Okay, so so Michelle was, I guess, the most hurt over you leaving the group. It seems like it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's interesting. So Beyonce told everyone that you missed a five-day tour in Australia, but you were not actually in the group anymore and didn't even fly out to Australia. Right. You weren't even, I guess, even invited to go to Australia. Right. Nobody even talked to me, like I said, for three days. I didn't even know there were, I knew they were going, but I didn't know there was no flight information. Nobody called me, like I said, for three days. Even if I wanted to go, how was I going to, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, when, when you talk about groups of people, you talk about a musical group or a company or a relationship or whatever else, things happen. Right. Egos come into play, people get upset, people hear things, there's hearsay, he say, she say, and then, and then, you know, when you talk about something as big as a musical group, you know, the fans put in their two cents and other people get in the mix and so forth. Right. But blowouts happen. But at one point, everyone calms down, right. and sometimes things get worked out. You talk about for three days, you didn't talk to anybody or whatever else. I mean, after the first day, did you think like, well, Destiny's Child is, is a huge group. You know, I'm, I just performed in front of 250,000 people and everything else like that. These types of opportunities don't come around every day. Did you ever think, let me, let me swallow my pride and go to Matthew and say, you know something, let's try to work it out. I know that this happened and I'm unhappy the way it happened, but let's try to work it out and make it work. Um, no, because like I said, it wasn't about the Destiny's Child or the money. It was about my happiness. And if I'm not happy, I'm not staying anywhere. So, you know what I mean? I can't give my all if I'm not happy and I'm not selling my soul or I'm not doing anything out of character for anyone or anything. And if I'm, if I'm not being respected how I know my father raised me to be, I'm not going to be a part of your situation. I will get back to where I'm doing, like why I'm back now, and I will see you there at the top. No love lost. Okay. So at that point, you just felt like there's really no future with Farrah and Destiny Shaw anymore. I mean, like I said, at that point when management is not even, you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing, and then we're young kids, who's going to make it happen? And, and it was already, like I said, I already got jumped and ganged up on by everybody. So it's like, you know, it's not all that it's cracked up to be in my happiness. Like, I wasn't happy. My health, you know, I, my health was, and nobody cared, you know, so. It's like, what's the point of being with all this family if nobody's treating like it? Yeah. What, was Beyonce one of the people, and Kelly for that matter, you know, would they, do you feel like they were ganging up on you? 
Um, no, no, they weren't um, in the room during that conversation. Um, but we've all had our own little, you know, things to wear. Just little, little stuff or whatever. Nothing major, though. But no, I don't think that Beyonce and Kelly ganged up on me now. Okay. Did you talk to Beyonce or Kelly after that? Because you, you just told me about how how Michelle called you up and was like, no, come, come, come. I mean, right. did, did you have any contact with Beyonce and Kelly at all? Uh, actually, Michelle handed um, Beyonce the phone and she was like, hey, are you going to come? And that's when I told her, you know I live 45 minutes away from the airport. So even if I wanted to come, that's not going to happen. Like, I'm like, why are you, nobody called me? And then she just gave Michelle the phone back. So I didn't feel like I was wanted. I know when I'm not wanted somewhere. Well, but did Beyonce not know that you weren't you weren't in the group anymore either? Well, I mean, like I said, nobody's talked to me for three days. Like you have to understand, like Destiny's Child, like we have a we talk, like everybody talks. We have group meetings about the little, smallest, dumbest stuff. So for not anyone to contact me for three days was just uncalled for and it was not not <clears throat> how things should have went I, I don't know anybody who handles business like that especially like I said dealing with young girls okay but but it still seems that if Beyonce got on the phone and asked if you were coming unless she was just just basically faking it I don't feel like it was 100% genuine I'm just going to say that the whole situation after that I don't feel like it was genuine like I said I feel like it was kind of setting me up so they could have you know a look to be like okay this is why she's not here so you know, I don't feel like it was genuine okay so so you feel like they were trying to create a situation where it's like hey Pharaoh messed up and she was given this great opportunity and she didn't show up to all these shows and we had no choice but to let her go yeah basically when, when I was researching this, it was kind of like, that's what kind of kept coming up. It was sort of like, you know, it was almost like you were being painted as a diva. Like, you know, like, you know, you're too good to, to show up to some of these shows and you'll just, you know, I mean, you're just doing your own thing and they have to work around you and they, and they're almost the victims in this whole thing. Exactly. And that's completely false. Gotcha. So... After you left Destiny's Child, I mean, you, you talked about the conversation with, with Michelle and Beyonce. Did you keep in, in contact with any of the girls in the group afterwards? Um, no, nobody was allowed to speak to me. Once um, you're not a part of uh, our situation, you're not a part of our situation. And I was made aware of that a long time ago with our dancers that we went through. and. Um, I was friends with some of them, and after Matthew let them go, he was like, it'd be in your best interest not to talk to them anymore because they're not a part of this group. So I already know they told, Matthew told all the girls not to talk to me. So, nope. Okay. So so w when you joined Destiny Child, were you told never to contact Latoya or Latavia? I didn't know them. So, I, I mean, it wasn't like I was, but there were other people that they didn't deal with, and they didn't, like, I'm not even gonna get into detail, but if you even played a certain song, they would look at you like a certain way. I had to watch what music I listened to. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're right, because I, I, I had forgotten that uh, Latoya and Latavia, they, they were actually together from the big, more or less the beginning, right? Yeah, they've been, they were friends since 10 years old, you know, they were, they were already 10 years in once I got into the situation as a, you know, as a friendship. And, and they would get upset at you if, you if you actually played a certain song. Certain stuff, yeah. They would, I would get the evil eye, like, uh, you know, we don't mess with them. Why are you playing that? <laughs> so, but then after you left, everyone was more or less prohibited from even talking to you or maintaining any sort of contact. Right. Okay. Did that that hurt your feelings at all? Um, you know, at first it did, but I mean, I, I understood what the, the group situation dynamic was because I had been in it, so I really couldn't even be upset because I already knew how Matthew worked and that was all his doing. Okay. Were you were you mostly upset at Matthew afterwards? Uh, yeah, he was the main person that, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Did you ever talk to him after you left the group? Nope. 
haven't talked to him, haven't seen him. I haven't seen anybody aside from Kelly um, since I've left the group. And when I see her, she's always a sweetheart. But it's not like we're exchanging numbers. Like, hey, girl, let's go hang out, you know. Although I wouldn't have a problem with it. I still don't know, you know what I mean, what's going on in that situation, so. Okay, so, but you have run into Kelly a couple times. Yeah. We were actually on the same plane one time, and I didn't, we didn't even know we were on the same plane, and um, it was just, hey, girl, how are you? How's your sister? Because um, I have 14 brothers and sisters, and I'm the oldest, so I had, a, you know, a strong hand in, like, helping raise most of them, and so they've always been very prominent in my life, so my little sister would come to the video shoots and stuff like that. And um, she asked about my sister and said I looked good. I'm like, you look good too. That's when she first started wearing the long weave. And I was like, yes, girl, keep that. That's she right there. She looked really good. So it was cute and sweet. And yeah, that was about it. Nowadays, they want me to be offbeat again. They like, oh, so can you be old silk? You know what I'm saying? But I think I had my own style, which I don't think is right or wrong. So. I, and I, and if you go back and listen, like I look, I had a chance to listen to my own music. I'm like, wow, I was pretty good. But he gonna be back soon, you know what I mean? My that's my brother. He just, you know what I'm saying, going going through it. So, you know what I mean? So we we gonna be back strong. We gonna be back three strong right now. But we keeping it, we keeping it going. <laughs>